give a give a good hard look at the rear sweepers. Is <laughs> possibly an area in the sideboard you could uh, you could imp improvise with. <laughs> The other world of journeys, though, I, I thought were a spectacular card in this sideboard. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, we we saw him bring those in against Paulo in the Dark Depths matchup, right? And uh, the, it's it's just a, another removal spell against the Dark Depths combo mm -hmm. against the the Merit Lage token. Uh, so many of the Dark Depths decks were bringing in uh, muddle. The, the, well, not just muddle, but the um, Oh boy, Chalice of the Void. It's been a long day so far. Yeah. Bringing in Chalice of the Void, setting it on one. Oh, to stop path. As a protection against path. Right. And so Otherworldly Journeys are two, and it gets around that. Yep. And it's just as effective. Yeah, it's true. You know, it blinks out of existence, and. Yeah, never, but it's arguably more effective because it never gets around a basic right. That's true. So, uh, so that, that, that's if you're wondering why that card is in the sideboard. Right. We, we've certainly well, seen decks always have that. Like the, the 1.0 versions, they have the absolutely amazing, oh my god, how did he think of that? And then they have the really? <laughs> <laughs> the, the one Ghost Quarter. Yeah, we saw Flame Tonkavus in his Columbus deck sideboard. And we were like, <laughs> you have like four lands. You can <laughs> right. mana. You're sideboarding down to 16 land. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the one Ghost Quarter is also a very nice card that has a, Congratulatory taxes for a lot of, uh, you know, he's the ability to tutor those up with the Knight of the Reliquary. You know, I bet, I bet a K, I would like to see a K to sideboard. I bet he sideboarded Outland. I bet Fujita has taught him that. Right, it's a bad matchup. You have to get lucky. One of the ways you can get lucky is to open up on, like, three land and then never draw land for the rest of the game and just have more spell density than your opponents. I've seen Fujita do that multiple times. Yo. Uh, sounds like he took out Pride Mages is what he's taking out. He's keeping his hand. Oh, did he, did he board in the Otherworldly Journeys? Is that what I just heard? I'm on. Brian is mulliganing. Huh. He bought in, brought in the Otherworldly Journeys. Definitely broke a sleeve right there. <laughs> yeah, so I guess he's, he's going to use the Otherworldly Journeys. his sleeves. Use the right. Otherworldly Journeys as sort of there a model to make sure to protect his own guys, maybe from huh. Brian's removal totally spells, totally and then they come back a little bigger. Sure. You can also use them that way. I'm friend. This is company. Mm -hmm. President. I'm friend. Oh, yeah? Tell them they need to make, it, <laughs> make them stronger. So Brian, Brian's been complaining about his sleeves throughout this top eight. <laughs> and they are Japanese and, sleeves and KMG, which yeah, Ikeda and knows those guys. Ikeda said, no, that's my friend. You're <laughs> politely lets him know you're, <laughs> you're rag railing on my friend. Never met him. <laughs> Ikeda sort of plotting out his turn yeah. with his hand. Is this a mulligan, Kibla? This is a mulligan. He's going to start on six on the draw. <laughs> There's a broken one. <laughs> he took my sleeves away. <laughs> I just need a sleeve. Thank you. Alright, so this is kind of... I'll keep. Looks like land and spells. Yep, and we're off. Kibler two games away from being a Pro Tour champion. Nikita's going to have to win three of the next four. Fetch land go. Plays against fetch land and take three. Well, we'll see. Yep. I blame fetch lands for my sleeves. Having a shuffle that much? And noble hierarch. Kate wait till the end of Brian's turn to uh, break his uh, Misty Rainforest, just figure out what land he wants. Yeah, it looks like he might have a Lightning Bolt in his hand, too. He's got to figure out whether he wants to bring one into play untapped. And Bolt now, or... He oh, he's going to decline to... draw. Declines to sack it at all. Hmm. 
Maybe he wants to draw some more lands here. Doesn't want to thin his deck out. Yeah, it looks like it. Looks like oh, he's got triple spectral possession in his hand. Like how much white he needs? He needs a second source of white. I don't think he has any white except the that one fetch land. So here comes Tarmogoyf. Looks like a two-three land. No, it's a three-four land three, creature four. and uh, instant. Okay, Kata continues to decline on that fetch land. Really wants to draw more white mana, so he can turn on the spectral possessions that are in his hand. They're a little unwieldy. I mean, he's, he's only got like 17 or 18 lands that produce white. I, I, would, I actually would have assumed he took those out, but hmm. maybe for the crushers. Sounds like he took out pride mages. Kipler's got a pretty good grip. Assuming he's got access to red mana. Is there a land in there? Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah, Arid Mesa. Tarmogoyf. Attacks into Nicotl. Hits for three. Kata goes down to 14. Go get a mountain. Helix to Nicotl. Yeah, gets basic mountain. It's funny, I don't he plays that. No, it feels like on the surface, the zoo matchup should be very fast. <laughs> but you have so much shuffling. Because <laughs> of all the fetch lands. Because of all the fetch lands. These matches probably take five minutes on Moto. I don't think they take that long. <laughs> You probably spend more time deciding what lands you want to put into play than you do right. playing the game. Well, Akeda does come up with a, another fetch land. So he's got access to two white mana now. Were you black fiddles at? Hmm? He has 15. Right? I can't read. Yeah. Double checking life totals. I think I'm at 16. He's at 15, right? Yeah. I think it's wrong there. I just wanted to. Light totals. Do I have the light totals at? Um, I should be 16. Take two? Take three. Yeah. I, 16. Oh, you're 16. Yeah. yeah. Brian wasn't that worried about Ikea's light totals. He was worried <laughs> about his own being recorded incorrectly. Okay, is thinking about his turn. Whatever he's at, he's at two less because he needs to, get, lands needs to break there. those two fetch lands. Yeah. <laughs> We've certainly talked about this before. How there's even more. Sometimes you're playing a, a control on control match. It goes so much quicker sometimes, right? Go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. uh, playing lands. And, but in, in a match like this, there's, there's so much uh, tactical interaction in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, if I attack and he doesn't block, you know, what, what does that mean as far as his ability to crack back? Or if he right, blocks, right. you know, or do I force him to have to block? and so these, these games can actually uh, really uh, slow down quite a bit as players try to figure out all the implications of each move. True. I mean, when we saw, you know, like when Jesus was bolting that Nicotl, by the way, clearing a path for his attacker. Well, he's not taking a lot of time on his decisions. Uh, it's true. He seems to know exactly what he needs to do. Kill things and attack. Yeah. There's a big chunk gone from Akeda's life total. Kisali Pride Here comes a Pride Mage. 16 to 8. Kibler cannot... Does not want to side out after seeing, certainly seeing the Jadavis oh, yeah, in game one. Sure. Yeah, Kade has got some fetch lands. He's still got those spectral possessions in hand that they can't, he's not even capable of casting yet. Lightning Helix is the more relevant card. The problem is it's a 3-4 Tarmogoyf, and what is it? Is it a 5-5 Knight of the Reliquary? 
At least a 4-4, possibly a 5-5. Yeah, so Lightning Helix, it doesn't even kill anything other than the Pride Mage. So yeah, here he's going to go get a White Land, presumably. Comes into play tapped. Goes and gets gonna get another one. one while he's at it. Falls to six. So, uh, would not even be surprised to see him yeah. <laughs> pack up the cards here. Not, eh, not just we, yet. we did see four paths from him in the first game. <laughs> he doesn't know it, but he's actually at three with a lightning bolt in Kibler's hand. Okay, to untap straws, another lightning helix. Not quite what he wanted. Normally a pretty good card, but Kibler's creatures are so big. Can't even kill them with three damage spells. Part of the key to why he's so good in the zoo matchup. Now here, uh, I'm sure Akeda will helix the pride mage. Kibler needs a target in order to be able to fizzle that, right? Saka's response would, in theory, yes. deny Ikeda the life, which would be lethal, but I think he needs a target. He does need a target. I mean, he could also bolt it himself, I guess, but... Oh, he bolted himself, sure. At that point, he may as well just bolt Ikeda. So, 16 to 9, but he falls, and Kibler shows him punishing fire. Game two goes to Brian Kibler. Two, two well, very convincing games from Kibler. Two, two, yeah, those were just blowouts. Very, very awkward, awkward hands. We really see the, the downside of Spectral Zoo here. Yeah. Just a, a, in a format with a lot of uh, other Zoo decks, it seems like that those can really just get stuck in your hand. Yep. Uh, getting to three white seems like it should be pretty easy. But, uh, yeah, so, but, I mean, but sometimes you need the red Greenland for your Curd Ape. You, right. So you get to four, but then that can you can hiccup before you get there. Well, I got to tell you, it may be two zero Kibler, but we have seen a lot of comebacks from two zero today. If you remember back to the quarterfinals, Kibler was down two zero, and yet here he is still playing. Ikeda was down two zero, and here he is still playing. All right, Burton took a two zero lead on Watanabe, only to see Watanabe come all the way back to force game five. So that one held up, but I mean, all four quarterfinals went 3 2, despite the fact that three of them started out 2 0. Yeah, you, you usually, uh, we, we're sitting here and we see someone go up 2 0, it's like, okay, well, we know how this will end. <laughs> but, now, uh, I will say, I think that all, all those matchups in the quarterfinals were a little closer on deck matchup than this right. one. Gibbler is really, really well set up for Zoo. I, I, I don't know. I like it when you see deck building and preparation really get paid off sure. like that. They predicted the field correctly. They innovated on their list, set it up to beat the stuff they expected, got the predictions right. Nobody else found the innovations that they did. Come back from O2 in your dream. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Ikeda's second finals appearance. Uh, he plays on a team that uh, has a couple players familiar with finals experience. And Jen, Jen Okamoto is someone who's come close a couple of the times. The Silver Collector. Silver Collector. Yeah, those guys, uh, as teammates, lost to Von Dutch for Tour Seattle. Yeah. place where Camille got his win. Jen Okamoto also lost to Daniel Zink in the finals of the World Championships. Right, right. He would, he would certainly like to, uh, to shake up that Silver collection? Silver collection, yeah. Add so some I gold. Got, I don't have that much more room for silver. <laughs> the silver case is all filled up. Kibler with a win here would get to, what, 37 pro points? He, he certainly puts himself within a, within a punch. He gives himself a puncher shot. Yeah, he's, he's got to, he might have to win Worlds, though, to catch the Watanabe the way he's been racking up the Grand Prix points. He'd have to head to Tampa. I think he is headed to Tampa. Okay. I think he's headed to Tampa, and then he's going to, like, take a look at the standings. Because he's got, you know, level 7, level 8 starting to look at sure. it, too. He's yeah. sitting. Price I mean, with a win here, it's, uh, it's 12 points from Honolulu. It would be 25 here, 37. That's, you know, okay, show up at Worlds. You can probably get to 40, but can you put a couple of Grand Prix results together? A good, a deep run at Worlds and get to 50? I'd be a nice number. 
set start, himself up for next year. Start pricing out flights to Kitakusha. <laughs> Uh-oh. Kate is going to take a mulligan. Ooh. So down 2-0, and he'll be playing game three with just six cards. Kibler will very also very be playing with six cards. So we see, some, game, of, we see some of the new rules in play here. Yep, simultaneous mulligans. I gotta say, that's the obvious thing to do. I yeah, I I, lo I love that rule. Yeah, it's just clearly better. Just checking up on uh, Brian Kepler's current point total. I don't think he has anything other than the twelve from Hawaii. You are correct. He has, he has no GP points, no nationalist points. Right. The player of the year race at Worlds will be fun. I mean, it'll be fun not just at Worlds, but basically, you know, settle in for a month, a month of checking Magic Pro Tour on Twitter is what I'll be doing. Yeah. Grand Prix Tampa, Grand Prix Kitakuskiu, Grand Prix Minneapolis, Grand Prix Paris, and then Worlds in Rome. Every weekend, six weekends in a row with Magic Premier events. Yeah, I'm heading to Tampa right from here. I'm leaving tomorrow. Head straight there? Yeah. Cool. So Siyoshi, Siyoshi Akita came in with 17 points. Okay, so he's got, he's also got 37. Well, he's got 37 with a loss. These guys would actually be tied at 37 right. with a loss. Kibler keeps six. Akita keeps six. We're off. Brian Kibler only needs to win one of the next three games, and he will be the Pro Tour Austin champion. Bane Slayer's not showing up for him, but I'm, I'm seeing... Uh, Hasn't needed it. I'm seeing Mrs. Elspeth, uh, <laughs> his, his, little, his little girlfriend well, on the Slayer's side. The queen. I wonder, <laughs> to make Elspeth the mistress? It's, like, it's his Gumar. <laughs> For you Italians out there. It's going to come down on turn three without uh, any kind of removal from Ikeda, who's clearly going to bolt the bird. Sure. Yeah, Ikeda cracks a fetch land and... A I'm sure he would like to remove Noble Hierarch. Noble Hierarch's been one of the cards that people have been just very, very scared of when Kibler's played it. Oh, yeah. Kind of like, oh, not the Noble Hierarch. Yeah. No, it's, it's... I mean, we've been playing up the Burn Willows combo and the Bane Slayers, but Noble Hierarch is not the one drop most of the Zoo decks chose. It seems... Absolutely correct, especially the way their deck is set up to play a little bit later into the game. Right. Like said, turn two knight, turn three bane slayer. Right. He, has eight, he has eight ways to accelerate accelerate out bane slayer angel right. between the noble hierarch and the knight and the relic. Or even just getting out the quick knights is pretty powerful. Exalted has been pretty relevant too, especially with bane slayer, but not exclusively with bane slayer. Right. So 37 would get these guys uh, also, it looks like, probably both into the top 10 in the standings for this year. Yeah, sounds right. Yeah, Watanabe's got a bit of a lead now in the Player of the Year race. He'll hit all four of those Grand Prix, so he'll be the likely leader headed into Worlds, but Martin Yuza is hot on his heels and hungry and will be hitting all of the same Grand Prix that Watanabe does. There's a chance that two of them might have a little bit of a distance from the field at Worlds, or, you know, LSV will hit a couple of those Grand Prix. He could put up a result. Start talking to Martin Juzo. Saito is still in it. Shuhei is still in it. Hey, and, and, and a win by any of those guys sort of throws the race. Right. We saw, we saw a sh Well, it, it eats we up saw, Watanabe's lead. Right, Watanabe's saw, lead is 10-ish is right now. Right. But I was saying, we saw Watanabe thrust himself into the race. With a couple of GPs Absolutely. and a GP win. Yeah, two top eights, a win, either of these things. Yeah, is, is, the pace, is the pace he's on sustainable? <laughs> it's going to be... I don't know. I, I, I want to say no, but I didn't think he could put up the four top eights in a row that he's done. So It was interesting. Uh, I, was talk, I was talking to a couple of players before the event who had participated in a fantasy pro tour. Okay. So before the, before the pro tour, you nominate, you know, there's a pool of players that you think are, are likely to, to be top picks to make the top eight. There's sure. only 20 players that were put into the fantasy pool. Okay. Okay. Four of them made this top eight. Yeah, this top eight was so good. Kata cracks a fetch land. He was not able to kill that noble hierarch, by the way. So turn two knight of reliquary for Kibler. And that's going to be, uh, you can have a Bane Slayer next turn if he wanted one. Play the land, oh, tap it. Oh, he wants it. one. He does want one. Play the land, tap it, sack, yes. get another land. 
and a knight for Ikeda. What are the what are the sizes on those knights? Looks like uh, two four four for Ikeda, three three for Kibler. Yeah. Evan Irwin seems to be anticipating the win here. <laughs> Lining up for the crowd. Lining shot. up for the crowd reaction. Kibler's just going to be able to send that Knight of the Reliquary into the air a couple times. With Elspeth? With Elspeth. That's How many cards? Oh. I mean, Katie can crack back and hit Elspeth if he goes two sure. nuts with it. Brian pretty clearly conflicted about.